What's up guys? Welcome back to the Cullico YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to TIG weld lap joints with exhaust tubing. For those of you that are familiar with this channel, you know that I build a lot of exhaust products through Cullico. I've had several requests to do a video on welding lap joints specifically. If you're new to the exhaust building world, I just want to spell this out briefly. Where the smaller tube actually slides into the larger tube like this and the larger tube overlaps a little bit and you come in and you're going to weld this step. For this tutorial we're going to be using 18 gauge 304 stainless steel exhaust tubing which is pretty thin so this will be a good practice. The first joint we're going to do is pretty simple just straight tubing where you can stand it up and do a nice weld right on the edge all the way around. The second joint we're going to do is an in-bend joint, which is going to be a little trickier because in the middle of mandrel bends, the material is thicker on the inside and thinner on the outside, so the heat does different things. So we'll start with this and then we'll go to this one here. So I already did this step, but for you guys, you're going to want to make sure that you scotch bright and acetone all of your tubing. Just use any Scotch-Brite. I prefer red, but you just want to get that surface finish off of it, get it to a polished state, a neutral state, and then acetone. That's just going to ensure a nice, prepped, clean weld surface for a nice weld. So let's dive into the equipment today. The first thing that I want to start with is what filler rod we're using. So on this 18 gauge 304 stainless steel, I always use the same filler rod and that's going to be 035 super missile filler rod. For those of you that watch this channel, you know that I'm religious about the super missile with stainless steel. Next, let's dive into the torch equipment. We'll be using a number 16 welding cup with a 16th inch, 2% serrated tungsten, sharpened to a point. As for the machine itself, I use a Miller Dynasty 210. For the settings today, we're gonna set the amps right at 40. We're gonna want pre-flow at 1.2 seconds and post-flow at 12 seconds. We're gonna be running 30 CFH through that number 16 welding cup. And then we'll be running about five CFH a purge and we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm gonna give you guys a pro tip right now. If you hear anything today, make sure that you hear this. The Cullico family has heard this in numerous videos, but if you're new here, this is important. You saw that I set the amps on the machine to 40 amps. That is very important. So when I teach people to weld exhaust, in any welding for that matter, but exhaust tubing specifically, I harp very diligently on finding the perfect target amp. So when we're doing butt welds, like in other videos, a lot of you know that I shoot for 35 or 36 amps. And what we do is we teach to just go wide open on the pedal. That's our aim here. We wanna go max pedal at a target amp and you're gonna wait, wait, wait for it to get to puddle size and then you're gonna start ripping, okay? And for a lap joint, I found 40 amps works really good on just a straight joint and, and once we get into the radius one, you might have to lift a little bit on the pedal, that kind of 37, 38, 40 amperage range. But what this is doing and why we do this is we want to eliminate a very important variable. You don't want to be welding some thin, beautiful material that you want to look really good and have the machine set at 100 amps and be floating the pedal in the center as you're trying to navigate around the tube already and make it look beautiful. You don't want to have to be running that pedal. That doesn't make sense. So I always teach to find that perfect amp. In this case, we're gonna do 40 amps on this straight lap joint, and we're gonna slam that pedal wide open, and we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait, okay, and then we're gonna start ripping. We're gonna start coming around, because that's gonna keep that puddle and that torch and that arc consistent, because we are going for beautiful, perfect welts, right? So. Let's dive in. We're gonna fire up the welder and we're gonna tack these two pieces together. We're gonna to put four tacks in 90 degrees.
keep your tacks nice and small so that when you weld over them, you don't see a blemish in the bead. You don't want big tacks because if you're trying to lay a really nice weld over the top, you're gonna see a bump in the weld and you'll be able to tell where the tacks are. Just little tricks. All right, we got four tacks. So this is where we're going to introduce back purge like I talked about earlier. We are going to fill the inside of this part with argon so that when we're welding it, the inside of that molten weld is shielded with argon gas and it keeps the whole weld all the way through very strong and clean and free of contaminants. And the other thing is it'll keep it from having that crusty slag on the inside. You don't want that. Even, even when you're welding low amperage, it'll still put like a crusty uh, sort of ridge on the inside of the weld seam. And that's not good for exhaust flow. Um, do you have to back purge? No, you don't. And if you don't have this setup, that's okay. You can still build a very nice exhaust without it. Um, but I would recommend if you're going to move forward here and start taking your game to the next level, I would start purging everything uh, exhaust related. Okay, let's do our first rip here. We've got the back purge set at five CFH, nothing crazy, just to keep the part full. We've got our amps at 40. We're gonna go max pedal and we're gonna do about 20 dips. We're gonna count our dips and you wanna count for a couple reasons. Another important tip, when you count, it's going to help you develop a cadence. So your dip cadence is on point. One, two, three, four, five, six. So your edges are evenly spaced on your dips, you know, your roll of dimes. The other thing is, is you wanna evenly space your start and stops when welding a tube. So I always come up with a 15 count or a 12 count or a 20 count, depending on the OD of the tube or what kind of joint it is. In this case, we're gonna shoot for like 20 dips. So when it's done, you can always kind of see where you start and stop because there'll be a heat line and the, and the weld will look just a little different. So I, I like to count so we can keep all of those start and stops uh, looking consistent. Okay, max pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nineteen, twenty. You notice how I left the torch there after I lifted on the pedal. You want to let that post flow cool that weld down, shield that weld from oxygen and contaminants to keep that nice gold uh, white color. Okay, let's do another 20 count. And for your start and stops, you're gonna wanna start back on the weld a little bit, maybe an eighth inch or so. Max pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Max pedal, back it up just a bit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, we're done with the straight lap joint. Should we take a closer look? You can see a nice consistent weld cadence with equally spaced start and stops. Not too bad. Good coverage as well. The next thing we're gonna do is weld a lap joint in the middle of mandrel bends okay and when it comes to just seams in general whether it be a butt weld or a lap weld um, they're always the trickiest when they're in the middle of a bend just because when the mandrel bender pulls the tube around the inside of the mandrel stays uniform as its appropriate thickness and the outside of the mandrel gets stretched so it makes it thinner on the outside 
So when you're going to weld and when you're setting your amps, it all kind of changes when you're on the outside here, which is okay. You just got to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is after we tack this up, we're actually going to start our weld on the outside, on the thin side. We want to finish the thin side first because you want to do the thin side when the material is at its coolest temperature. If you started on the thick side, the whole tube would start heating up and heating up. And when you get to the thin side, if it's already hot, it's going to be tough to negotiate with that thin material. So whenever I'm welding in the middle of a mandrel bend, I always weld the thin side first. That's a tip for you. So we'll start with our four tacks again. And then we'll go for like 20 dips, just like we did on our straight tubing. And I'm actually going to switch the amps from like 40 to 38, 37, because uh, we're dealing with that thin side over there. Remember, keep your tack small. Okay, we're gonna set up our back purge again. And we'll run like five through this thing, maybe seven. Okay, we've got it set up in the same orientation where the larger OD acts as a shelf here. And we're gonna weld right along that edge. All right, and we're gonna start on the thin side. So I'm gonna do the thinnest section first, like 20 dips. We wanna get that out of the way while the material is cool. So I set my machine to 37 amps. I backed it down just a little bit, kind of for this thin section. Let's see how it goes. Let that post flow do its job and cool down that weld and shield it. Not too bad. Straw colored. Okay, let's get that thin side out of the way. Let's keep going. You'll be able to tell when you guys are welding for you newer welders on exhaust, the thin side versus the thick side. You'll definitely be able to tell. When you're welding and you're looking at the pool, okay, when, you're, when your amperage is set properly and your speed is proper, that puddle, that, that electrode will stay a nice consistent arc. When, it's, when the material's getting too hot, when you're putting too much heat to it, your arc's gonna start spiraling. It's gonna start doing funky things. You're gonna be able to tell. So right there, a couple different times on that stretch, it would kind of start doing some funky stuff and I'd lift on the pedal just a hair. So I started max pedal, waited, waited, started ripping, started ripping. When it started getting a little funky, I just lift a bit, just a bit and let that electrode come back into a consistent shape. Max pedal. Well, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we're through the thin side. I'll show that to you first. Now as we start coming around the side and the back, we're gonna start getting to our thicker uh, material again so we can, we can just roll. You don't have to be as careful. Okay, let's have a look at just our thin stretch here. Okay, not terrible. Let's keep moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our mandrel lap joint is complete. Should we see how we did? All right, here we are. Once again, a very consistent cadence. 
in terms of dips and consistently spaced start and stops. Good coverage, good color. I would call that a successful, strong, and attractive lap joint. That's going to conclude today's video on TIG welding exhaust lap joints. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you're able to get value out of this content and learn something. As always, I'm rooting for you on your fabrication journey, and we'll see you next time on the Cullico YouTube channel. See you later.